Hey guys, Levi here with Trident Fly Fishing and today we're gonna to be tying an Alflexo crab. Alflexo crab's a fly designed by uh, guides in the Seychelles to target Indo-Pacific permit, but it's one of those flies that sort of grew out from there and it's become a staple anywhere you're targeting permit. Really good crab imitation. We're gonna test it out on these flats that we got with uh, striped bass here in the summer and uh, check back with us on that. Probably gonna tie that fly in green, but today we're gonna be tying this fly in the color tan, which is a uh, pretty common color for this pattern. If you're going to say the Seychelles, somewhere like that. Probably want to carry this fly in colors like white to imitate ghost crabs, maybe green. That's another hot color in this pattern, but uh, any color you can come up with that matches the crabs in the area that you're fishing is probably going to be a safe bet. For the hook, we're going to use a Gamagatsu SC15. I like that hook a lot. I like it for various flies. Works really well for this pattern because it has a nice wide gap. It's also super sharp. And when you're dealing with fish like permit, they're pretty tough to convert. You want to have that little extra gap on there to really ensure, put an extra insurance policy on your fly, if you will. And for the body of this, we're using chocolate's body tubing. Comes in a variety of different sizes and it's just one of those materials that it's easy to work with and you can get it in quite a few colors. And it's also one of those things you can leave on your bench and use it for things that aren't just the Alflexo crab. So a nice addition to your sort of tying area. And if you're looking for materials, uh, or the full description, you can find that below. You might have to hit the show more button to uh, really see it. And if you're looking for all the materials to tie this fly, we've got that all on tridentflyfishing.com as well as probably like 10,000 other items on there. And orders over 49 bucks do ship for free. So take advantage of that regardless of what you're tying. But uh, let's go ahead and get started with this fly right now. We're gonna get started with a Gamagatsu SC15 size one hook in the vise. You can tie this fly small down to like an eight and uh, probably up to about eh, maybe a two odd or so for some larger crabs. So let's get started with some monofilament thread. We're using 6,000's Danville thread on here. And we're gonna lay a base and we're gonna run it past the bend of the hook. And there's a reason for that and we'll cover that shortly. So. Let's snip that excess and move our thread on back. And this is a fly that's kind of tricky, but hopefully this video clears up some of the frustration that may be surrounding the Alflexo crab. But if you are one of those people who enjoys tying flies, I will say that this is definitely worth spending the time to tie just because it's completely different than most other flies out there. You kind of learn stuff throughout the way. So. We've ran our thread about 35, 40% into the hook's bend. And with this wide gap hook, we have a little more clearance than normal. And now we're gonna advance our thread about 20% beyond the hook eye. We're gonna move into some of these Chacon's Stealth Bead Chain Eyes. This is the color olive brown. And size four millimeter, the large. I'm gonna get in there and we need two sets of them, so we're gonna clip off two sets of two. Here's our first one, set that aside. Get our second one. So we're gonna go ahead and put this, like I said, about 20% of the way beyond the hook eye, and just a couple of uh, securing wraps. You can do some X wraps here, figure eights, or whatever you may wanna call them. Do a few on either side and sort of a helicopter wrap to really secure that. And what these beads are gonna do is they're gonna act to keel this fly. They're also gonna act to sort of create profile to it as well whenever we get into that flex tubing. So now bring your thread back right to about where the hook bend starts to, uh, starts to shoot down and we'll tie in another set of these eyes. And I think there's probably various debating whether where it should be tied exactly, but I just like them to be evenly spaced and pretty consistent. That way we don't have it throwing anything off on the fly or anything like that. And again, we'll hit it with a few helicopter wraps and make sure that it's straight on top of the hook shank, both of them. We're gonna glue this fly out pretty well, so you don't have to worry about doing that right now. So now we're gonna bring our thread right about midway to the end of where we have it right there. And that's really important whenever we start working with this uh, flex tubing. This is the Blaine Chocolates body tubing. We're using quarter inch 
and color tan. You can tie this fly in any variety of colors, but tan seems to be a, a solid option. Olive's good too. So we want to measure this out. Uh, go a little generous just so you don't find yourself running into trouble. And that's probably about an inch and a half. So go ahead and cut that off. And what I do real quick, I'm just going to burn this end, take a lighter to it and just hit it right there. You'll find that in this fly, we use our lighter about as much as a bobbin. So it's a very essential tool to have. So now that we have one end uh, burned, it won't fray or run into any trouble there. So what we're going to do now is put this tubing over these eyes and we want to catch it right where our thread was. That's why it's important not to bring your thread all the way back to there. So get in there, really crank down on it. That's the benefit to this 6,000th thread and just throw a whip finish in there. So now that we've got our whip finish in there, I'm just gonna cut this thread off. And we're gonna move right into some UV fly finish. This is a loon thick consistency. You can use anything you have that's clear. And we wanna coat our thread wraps entirely we want to get these wraps completely covered. Like I said, it's going to add durability, but it's also going to prevent us from burning our thread wraps off on this fly when we come in with a lighter, which we will do shortly. So now we have that. I'm going to come in with my bodkin and just evenly distribute this around those thread wraps. It doesn't have to be super neat. It's just sort of a protection more so than anything else. So I'm good with that. We'll hit it with our light real quick. All right, that's good. And now we'll see these, you can cut them off, clean it up a little bit, but I like to leave a little bit and then I just come in here with my lighter, touch it with the flame. That'll singe everything nicely and kind of, you can touch it if you need to, but you'll see how that cleans everything up and also prevents this material from fraying, which it's kind of prone to do. So from here, we're gonna grab our bobbin again and we're gonna reattach our thread right behind that eye. And what's real important to do with that is you need to, you need to have some tension on the hand that you're not tying with. So what I do, wrap it around my left index finger because I'm right-handed and I'll pull that down real hard, but let's go ahead and see how whenever I add pressure that way, that kind of creates the profile of this fly. I have a little too much flex tubing, so I'm gonna hack off a little and then we'll re-singe it. All right, so again, like I said, Important to have that tension on your left hand. And then we'll push this in the opposite direction to create the body of the crab. And then come in here with our thread and secure it. You gotta manipulate it a little bit. And you can try to make that neat. It's kind of a tough thing to do, but if you work on it, you can at least get it behind the eye so you can burn the rest of it or cut it if you're more comfortable with that. But you'll see that creates a nice crab shaped body right there. So now I'm just gonna add a few more wraps to this to really get it in place and we're gonna hit it with a whip finish. And we will cut both pieces off. But just like we did on the back, we're gonna come in with some of that clear UV resin coat our thread wraps because i'm i'm going to trim this but i'm going to cut it too or i'm going to burn it too just because it makes for a neater eye and hit it with our light before we get in there and burn everything up and cut it and all the materials that we're working with today can be found at tridentflyfishing.com and orders over 49 bucks do ship for free. So got everything you need if you wanna tie some off flexo crabs or any other fly for that matter. So now I'm gonna come in here and 
cut this out. And like I said, it's kind of tough to work with, but I want to remove as much of that as possible before I singe it all off. You want to be careful with your lighter. It probably will take a couple of times before you really get this honed in, but I've just found that this is so much easier. I don't want to inhale that either. And you can also, if your eye of the fly is getting a little built up, just singe your bodkin with the lighter, burn it, and we'll just shove that right through. So now that we have our body complete, we're gonna move into some ultra chenille. This is a micro in size, color tan. We're gonna create our claws as well as our legs with this. And what we need is three, eh, about an inch long pieces, maybe a little over an inch. We want three of those for the rear legs. So measure them out to be about the same size. They don't have to be 100% equal, but use that as a sort of guide. So now that we have our legs cut, we're gonna come in with our bobbin threader and we're gonna use this to thread these legs through this flex tubing. And a note that's real important to make about this fly is most people are gonna probably assume that you put the legs at the bottom of the crab because that's where they generally are oriented on the real thing. But if you put them on the bottom, the fly is always going to ride with the hook point down, which is the exact opposite of what you want. So when you thread these legs through, it's crucial that they're above these beads. So let's get started with the set of legs that's going to be nearest the middle of the fly. So whenever you put this in, I'm going to look for them to be about right on top of that set of bead chain eyes. And when you put it in on the left, you want to make sure that it stays straight when you pop it out on the right. That will prevent your legs from being mismatched or just look funny. So now we have that straight, we're gonna go ahead and thread this chenille right through it and just pull this through the fly. It's nice and simple. So now we're gonna move into a second set of legs and I want this to be almost touching that set right there. So again, pop your chenille through, bring it on back through that set of holes. Even that out, it doesn't matter. Once they're in there, you can move them. Now we're gonna move to the third set. We'll put those right next to the set previous. Actually, I gotta come from the right on this one, I'm sorry. We'll put those almost touching the last set we put in. And again, keep that on a straight path and everything will look nice and neat. All right. So that's good. And that is our rear legs. So now that we've got our legs finished, we're gonna move into the claws. You wanna be generous on this because you don't wanna be having to tie these, uh, tie the knot in this whenever you have just a little bit of fiber. So I'm going with probably uh, maybe four inches or so. And that, you're gonna have some waste on that, but it'll, it'll save you time in the end. So double that over so they're the same length and just cut it. And then I cut it here too. And the way that you make these claws is we're gonna tie an overhand knot on one end. And don't just get in there and pull this knot tight immediately. I wanna manipulate this knot upward so that we have less waste. We have a nice clean claw. I'm happy with that. So I pull it tight. And now I'll trim this up a little bit. And just like we did with the legs, we're going to come in. I want this to be about right over top of those bead chain eyes because that'll give some something for it to seat to whenever we get in there with the glue. But I want those about right over top and I want to cover 
about the width of that tubing. Okay with that, so let's get that in there. Put this through, and then just like we did with the legs, we'll pull it on through the fly. Manipulate that as needed. And we want to measure this left, uh, this left claw, and then on the right, we want it to be close. So let's get our knot. And this one's a little tougher than the last. If you have a bodkin, maybe that'll help you pull it through a little bit. I've also found if you kind of twist it back and forth, that gets them to at least stay close together. And trim off the excess here. All right, that's good. That's a nice apparent set of claws there. And now what I'm gonna do real quick is get our lighter. We need to singe all of this chenille so that it doesn't fray and it also kind of adds a natural taper to it. So don't get in there and hold your flame on there because you're gonna melt your chenille. Go easy, it's just about one second. Maybe even a fraction of a second. See how quickly I did that? And you get your nice taper to it and you also won't we'll have to worry about this fraying. This is a hyper realistic fly, but it's real effective for permit bonefish, and I kind of think we're gonna probably use this for striped bass in the summer. But we'll have to check back on that one. But I think this fly and the color green will be very effective for them. So everything's singed now, it looks a lot neater and we're gonna move into our eyeballs. And for eyes, we're just using some Rio 30 pound uh, mono. This is standard saltwater mono, nothing crazy. Sorry. We're gonna cut off about two inches. We need two sections of that. So get that, and we're gonna turn these into eyes in short order. So what I wanna do here, I'm gonna start right about where the hook shank is, I'm just gonna push this through, just like we did with our legs, and find where you're happy with it coming out the other end. And then what you need to do here is, again, bring your lighter in, get that nice and melted, you pull it right down, and then right when it touches, hit it with your finger. You can uh, hit your finger with some water if you don't wanna burn it, but it's really not all that bad. So now you have one eye, we're gonna do the same on the other side, so. Thread this through. And you want to get it kind of even. I need to look at it. I'm a little too far up. It's a finicky fly to tie, but I think it's worth it, both for fish catching abilities and for what it provides you as a learning tool for those who like to really tie their flies and kind of know everything, all the ins and outs. So again, just like we did with the other eye, get that set on fire so it's melting, pull it forward, and then touch it right there, and that'll get everything nice and secure. So now what I'm gonna do, even these up. And again, bring our lighter in, and singe this into a little ball. Blow on it whenever you're happy. I want it to stick out just a little bit. Do the same on the other side. Now you got a nice set of eyes. We'll even that out just a wee bit more. And from there, I want to coat it with this UV fly finish. This is the color orange. We'll have some nice orange eyes here. So this is a simple step. Just get in there, get a little and you can, if you want to get real crazy with it, add a pupil in there with a Sharpie or something. That's totally fine, but I'm just going with a natural orange with a sort of brown interior. So do that to the other eye. Make sure they're even in terms of size and sort of what they look like. Don't cure it until you're happy with it type of thing. I'm good with that. 
All right, so that's good to go. And one final step here, we're almost done. I wanna come in here, you can use your UV finish, but I prefer to use E6000. It's a really good adhesive. As you can tell, this tube's been through a lot of work, but this is an adhesive that bonds things really, really well, and it also isn't totally rigid, so you get a little bit of that flex. So I wanna get these legs to be totally coated, and we'll come in here and get it right to the claws too, and cap that. And then what I do, wet your finger, some water or uh, dish soap actually works really well too. And then I wanna just press this down. And we'll go ahead and clean that out up here and sort of pat it down. And if you like, you can get in there with your Sharpies or your markers of any type and color the fly up before you do that. But that's what we're looking for on top. Smooth it out maybe just a little bit more. manipulate the legs before the glue sets. You have quite a long drying time. But that is an Alflexo crab. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.